So this is another reason I want to go over why using a real brokerage um, is very important and in the long run saves you money, even if you had to pay a commission. Um, even uh, uh, most brokerages, depending on how much of your trade or how much it costs, uh, a lot of them don't charge a commission fee. Um, especially if you have like a bank account attached to them somewhere where they can they can just use your money if you give them permission to to you know they'll trade with it they'll use your money how they see fit your money will always be there but you allow them to use it how they want to to make money also um, but I just want to show you this and this is one of the things I noticed early on with Robin Hood and it's why I pulled a lot of my money out of it uh, to begin with, and this was before uh, AMC. This was back when I was uh, heavily trading cryptos and everything before I saw the crash coming um, in May. And it wasn't just that, it's everything. Um, when you look at market close here at this time at 4 p.m. when the market closed, uh, Robinhood says it closed at 40.78. Um, one thing I started noticing initially, because I started using other brokerages, and especially with crypto, I, I use a lot of crypto brokerages, and I noticed that every time I wanted to buy on Robinhood, the price was always higher. When I wanted to buy, it would be showing, you know, the normal price typically when you're looking at it and watching the ticker and watching it move, but as soon as you go to buy, you know, it would jump up the, for you to have to pay a couple extra pennies or whatever it is to, to get the order to go through um, it's almost impossible to set a limit price on Robin Hood that's lower or at the bottom end of the ass big bid spread and actually get it filled uh, if you're trying to buy and then I noticed when I'd go to sell it was never at the price that Robinhood was showing. They were always forcing me to sell it cheaper than what it was worth. Um, and anytime I try to put a limit in and I, you know, try to get it at market value or higher, it would never go through ever. But I mean, the moment you put your limit order in higher than what the price is showing at it'll automatically go through and the moment you put a bid in to sell it lower or you're asking to sell lower uh, than what they're actually offering it for it, it will go through immediately like immediately and um, 4078 is what they showed at close and when you go to Weeble they show 4076 so uh, and not a drastic change, but still two cents difference. And this is another uh, PFOF system set in place here. Um, I know I went over that I just opened my Fidelity account and I just transferred um, $500 into it. And I put my own, like immediately at market close, right at four o'clock when it was sitting at like 40.76. Um, I put my after hours order in and I put my limit price at 4060 almost 20 cents under what it was showed on Robin Hood and on Weevil and I mean it got filled almost immediately um, it took maybe maybe five seconds maybe but the order got filled immediately almost 20 cents cheaper and you may think that that's not a big deal but it is that's a huge deal you would never be able to get that to happen on Weevil or Robinhood. And this is one of those instances where when it comes down to wanting to buy or wanting to sell whenever this thing's going crazy, you want to make sure, A, you're going to be able to set a limit that you know is going to get filled. Like it's going to get filled. These guys are going to find someone to buy it or someone to sell it to you at that price. They're not looking for a broker like Robinhood is because they don't actually have your stock to give you a trade for you. They have to find someone and 
that's where all that extra money goes like that. <laughs> the, the pennies, the extra pennies they make off making you buy at higher prices and making you sell at lower prices. Millions of users doing that, you know, all throughout the day. That's how they, they made like $331 million last year, I think it was, um, just from that, just from the that shit right there, that little gap spread and their PFOF system. So that's why it's important, A, to learn more about brokerages, how they work, how order flow is delegated amongst different brokerages. But this is one of the reasons why you want to be on something like Fidelity, because you can set a price that you think is fair. Obviously, if I would have put like $40 in, it most likely wouldn't have gotten filled. But, uh, you know, 20 cents is 20 cents to real people trading on real brokerages. And if that's your limit, that's your limit. And if you're buying a sizable amount, which, um, you know, 10 shares, almost $500 worth, whatever, that's that's a sizable order to put in. Um, and this is why I'm going to be transferring literally all of my shares from my other. I got shares in IBKR, shares in Robinhood, shares in Weeble, um, shares in TD. And I am all of my shares I am transferring over to Fidelity. All of them just because a that was incredible to be able to do that and not only that in the like as soon as after hours kicked in I was able to put an order in almost 20 cents less than what Robin and Weeble are showing then it went right through right through and that that's something that's very important as a individual retail trader to be able to do uh, th those little cents here and there, that they're they're big deals, um, especially when it comes to options. Like that's the one thing you can't do. Um, Weeble and Robinhood, you you ain't putting a limit in for your option orders. Like you're gonna get it at whatever they tell you you're gonna get it for. If you even try to fuck with those numbers and put a limit in that's anything other than what they say it is or higher. Or if you're selling and you try to put it anything higher than what they're asking, it's not going to happen. It just isn't. Typically, when there's very high volatility and shit like Robinhood or Weeble, you will literally have to take a loss. If if you want to get it sold immediately, like if it's crashing or something, you want to get it sold ASAP, you are not going to be able to put the price in that they're giving. It's going to sit there and then you're just going to keep losing money and losing money and losing money. Um, you're going to have to like immediately put an order in, you know, a few cents lower than what you want to sell it for to try to get it sold quickly. And having a brokerage like Fidelity, you don't really have to worry about things like that. Um, their bid ask spreads are always really, really fair. Uh, they'll even like show you the market price. Um, I think they actually, when it was sitting at like 4076 or whatever it was, um, they had a, a bid and an ask when I was putting my order in for like 4066 or something like that. Somebody was trying to get rid of them for, and I, you know, I put, put it in as 4060 and boom filled so it's shit like that that's important and it's very important to get timely execution especially when you're in a squeeze scenario a squeeze type play where the volatility is just you know it's tr traditionally and we don't know how this is going to play out what they're going to do but either way when the volume kicks in and the volume and volatility are ridiculous it's hard to get orders through sometimes so I just wanted to show some people that just another reason why I believe everyone should move their shares for sure to Fidelity. And if you're able to get approved for options trading on Fidelity, by all means, um, this is not Weeble. This is not Robinhood. You, you, they will literally check your information. Um, you're not just going to be able to plug and play the right answers and, and they go, yeah, here you go. Um, I immediately tried to apply for a level two because uh, I'm not trying to fuck with margin. I don't really fuck with margin. Um, 
I will eventually, but I'm not fucking with margin right now because I don't need any forced liquidations fucking up any of my plays during what's going on or anything like that. Even though a lot of times it's not that much, but still, um, I'm not fucking with it. So, <laughs> but I applied for level two and I, they denied me for level two and I was like, what the fuck? Like, hey, I already know I answered all the questions correctly. I got approved for my options trading on TD and on my IVKR and it's the same fucking shit. But uh, I'm assuming it was because, A, I hadn't funded my account yet, probably. I hadn't made any trades yet on my account. Um, <clears throat> I hadn't had my profile actually updated with uh, my net worth, my annual income, all that shit. Even though I put it in on the application, my profile wasn't quite set yet. So that could have had something to do with it, but I went back through... Um, because on the other ones I had to apply, well, I applied for level one first and then applied for level two afterward, but I went through and applied for level one today, and for some reason I got um, an order notification saying that it's, uh, I had to wait 30 days to apply for options because I had already put a previous application in, but the application said that it wasn't approved, um, but now, for whatever reason, it says that my options trading is approved but i have no idea if it's level one or level two <laughs> so i i don't know i know i checked the level two and it said i wasn't approved but again it may have had something to do with um, my account just getting funded the cash may not have cleared yet i just made my first trade on the account today there's a lot of shit that could have played into the fact of them denying me the level two options um or they could have been on hold i just know it said not approved and i was like well what the fuck it didn't say like pending or anything like when I went to my options shit now to check the order of the level ones, it says uh, hold or something pending hold. And then I click on it, it says that's what it told me I had to wait 30 days because I already put an, op an options uh, application in. But I went to my account, it, it uh, said that I am approved to trade options now. So I don't know. I'll have to look in it tomorrow and um, investigate a little further. That's not the point. My profile, how I trade, again, is not. That's not what's important. I I have no intention of being a cores or anyone like that. And, um, you know, I don't want people mimicking my trades. We are all individual retail traders. Our financial responsibilities are our own. We have to become the trader that we want to be and that we're going to be. It is... Uh, Sure, there are things you can do and learn from people, which is what I want to do. I want to teach what I know and learn more and bring more education to you guys about this. But as far as me as a trader, you know, that's me. That's my thing. Um, how I trade, A, should never dictate how anyone else trades. You should be coming up with your own plan and educating yourself. This is your money. You need to know as much as you possibly can before you start putting it into things. Like if you're not familiar with options, I don't know if you're not familiar with options. I'm not going to be like just live streaming like Coors did willy-nilly all these options plays I'm doing and shit. And then, you know, maybe someone sees me make money. And they're like, oh, I'm going to do that. And then they, you know, you go and do that. And you may have no idea that I sold one of my positions because I had a stop loss on it or something. You don't know what a stop loss is, how to do it. And then all of a sudden you have this option that you saw me buy and now it's just crashing and you're just losing money and you don't even know what to do. So that's why I, that's why I was on cores about that right there. I mean, showing people how to trade, buying shares, things like that. That's cool. If you want to make videos going over explanations of how hypothetical scenarios work, that's cool too. But if you're not a financial advisor and you make the claim you're not a financial advisor, <laughs> Uh, I do not think you should be openly showing options activity. Uh, there's guys out there that charge for that. Like you want to see how they do their options plays and shit. They charge you because they're experienced or they're, you know, licensed to give financial advice. And they charge you for teaching you that or letting you in on that or whatever the case may be. Um, is it illegal? No, it's not illegal. But I am not. I, I can't sleep at night doing what like Coors does and did. He lost a lot of people money. He did, and that ain't gonna be me. I'm not doing that. You can ask me all the questions in the world that you want, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. But when it comes to how I play options and shit, that that will not be something that I ever show live because. I had to study and learn and figure it out on my own, and that's why I'm knowledgeable about it, and I understand 
it more than a lot of people do. And if you haven't even taken that step yet to educate yourself, start watching some videos. Like I said, I recommend paper trading apps. Um, Think or Swim on TD is great. You can learn a lot there. Um, a guy that I learned a lot from is In The Money. If you look him up on YouTube, um, <clears throat> little younger, goofy, nerdy kid with blonde hair and glasses, but very, very, very smart. Goes to anything you want to know about the stock market. Um, he has a video for it, and he breaks it down in a simple manner that's fairly easy to understand, and he quizzes you as you go through. And if you can't answer the questions when he gets to the end of the segments, he tells you you need to go back. And if you need to go back, don't even go further because you're not going to understand anything else if you don't understand this. This is one thing I want people to understand. I know you you want to make money in this play, and you know you've heard or seen that options can make you a lot of money. And if that's what you want to do, uh, I suggest you study your ass off like I did, and you learn how they work, what you need to do to be successful in trading them, because that is your responsibility at the end of the day. It's your decision, and I'm I'm not gonna be the guy that. People watch what I do and are like, oh, he got that. I'm going to get that. And then, like I said, you have no idea that I put a stop loss in on mine. And if it starts going down, I'm good. I got profits. It sold it automatically for me. I'm fine. And then you're sitting here and then you, you know, you lose all your money. So I am not comfortable doing that <laughs> as far as traditional trades or whatever. I have no issues doing that at all. Um, uh, you know, just buying stock online, like showing you this position, whatever. I don't have a problem with that at all. It's not a big deal. It's fucking stocks. <clears throat> not, no big secret there. Um, just wanted to go over how you can actually put in your limit and you can really negotiate on um, brokerages like Fidelity. TD does the same thing. IBKR was the same thing, but they, they're transitioning to PFOF and I'm shutting my account down with them. So... Uh, yeah, so there you go. Get a Fidelity account if you don't already have one. And uh, start playing around with that. Start playing around with the, the bid-ask spread on your own. And uh, put put some limits in under what the asking price is and should see if you hit. Uh, it'll help you become a better trader, I promise. So, uh, I hope you guys are sleeping because I'm not fucking tired. Corruption and manipulation don't sleep and neither do I. I'm out.